All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Research and Development. In this episode, we are going to move one step further, finally, with the conveyor belt bracelet Ben Riley web shooter project. So, here we have our bracelet. And as you can see, the motor got a little bit bigger. So, I got some stories to tell. Here's the motor we were using before. Um, I tried everything that I could uh, to make the belt as flexible, as compliant, as thin as possible, just so that I could keep this motor. And the motor just wasn't strong enough. I finally got the belt as thin as it probably was ever going to get, I believe, right here. What I did was I extended uh, the belt pattern all the way across so that it would add more flexibility. And I decreased the thickness quite a bit. You can see here's the original thickness is what we started with. We went down a lot. This is pretty rigid. This is pretty thick. And it sort of worked, but also sort of didn't, not without some help. And I was cranking this up to like 9, 10 volts when this really is only rated for 6. So, no. I decided, I put my foot down, this was not the way to go. So, replace the motor. And this motor is bigger, but it works surprisingly well aesthetically, I think. Um, if I put this on... I promise you're not going to scream in horror. It doesn't look absolutely terrible. Alright. Very, very cool. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not awful. And I kind of moved it down. The other motor was pretty much right here. But I moved this one downward, so it kind of has that sort of flush look with the wrist that I really like. And now you're probably asking, um, what was this doing there in the shot just now? So this, you might recognize this as my spring web shooter cartridge. Uh, this can be loaded up with a projectile. This one works for either bolas or, or, uh, or just a magnetic projectile. You can load this up with any sort of projectile and uh, fire it from one of my spring web shooters. This is an older one, and I've made some modifications since then. Let's see if I can get the newer one up here. Basically, the newer one has this different profile of lever uh, to prevent misfiring. So yeah, why do I have these out today? What, what are these doing with the Ben Riley web shooter project? Well, we have finished the belt. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have finished the belt. I mean, look at this thing. There it is. Well, it's two parts there, and I can straight up just put it on. There we go. No help needed. It is a conveyor belt bracelet, just as advertised. Let's add some voltage. Now this motor is beefier, like I said. It's also rated for 12 volts. I'm running it at 10. So yeah. No problemo. Let's move it up to 12, see what this baby can do. All 
I actually like to run it this way instead, because that is uh, oh, so much smoother. All right, so you can see now we have a slot for a cartridge on here. So we're coming along on progress. And this is the slot for those cartridges that I was showing you earlier from my spring web shooter. We need the spring, you can put that on. Just kind of clips on like this. There it is. And um, we have, voila, cartridge. And so that's loaded up. See the spring is compressed, and you press this lever, and it will shoot as soon as a projectile is loaded in to the cartridge. So yeah, and uh, we have a couple of these already done. We're gonna finally have something Spidey themed, I promise. We're using red and blue. So this is going to be a really nice looking Spider-Man prop, I think, by the end. We're just going to have four um, red like this and then blue on the opposite uh, side. So we're going to have four cartridges that will rotate around. So let's attach those. I have something that works rather nicely. So, um, <laughs> not a big fan of hot glue, um, but uh, does the job for this prototype. So you're probably wondering, uh, why am I only using one line of glue to attach these? Wouldn't that be weak? Uh, well, the reason is because because this is curving around, you know, it's not always flat. Uh, if I glued it on a flat surface up here, it would start to peel over here. So there has to be as little uh, contact as possible. Um, and so if I do it like that, it works pretty well. It's pretty secure. Obviously, we're probably going to have something more secure than hot glue for a final version. But uh, this works all right as is. So let's load up the cartridges. Let's see how it looks. I would say that this looks pretty good. Obviously, it's pretty bulky. Um, reminder that this is a prototype, and um, I'm honestly pretty happy with it. So, uh, yeah, I think the next step is to make a button uh, for the palm so that I can rotate this um, with that button. So for this project, we're going to be using a voltage regulator because our power source is going to be 5 volts, but our motor requires 12 volts. So this is a DC-DC converter that's adjustable. Just need to make sure that I'm outputting 12 volts and then I can begin to assemble the circuit together. The reason why our power source is five volts is actually really cool. Um, no, you know what? I'll talk about that later.
so here we have the system without the cartridges in it. We still have to make the cartridges or at least load the projectiles into them. And we've got our single push button here. That'll work really well to just activate the rotation. We have the power coming from these two snap connectors here and this system is actually really cool. This gauntlet is actually just made for testing uh, things like this and that's where our 5 volt power source comes from. So the 5 volt power source is actually uh, you know what? Nah, I'm gonna talk about that later. For now, let's load up the cartridges and test this out. So like I said before, we have these two snap connectors that are providing power to our circuit here and uh, turn the remote on. Actually, I should talk about this. The remote is actually the remote for our 5 volt power source, which is actually, no, you know what? I'm going to save this for another video. So I have the cartridges that we just made and we can start loading those in. All right, so we have our system all loaded and ready to go. And let's go ahead and get the camera into a position where we can see this test. Alright, so that worked pretty well. We can twist these lines up to make a nice little thing for me to hold. And uh, as you can see, one of the cartridges misfired, but we were able to make it later. And here's another angle of that whole test. Also important to note that clearly one of the springs flew out and that's not supposed to happen. Clearly it didn't on the other three.
Alright guys, and that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I want to thank my wonderful patrons, Jacob Lawrence, J-Dubs Animation, Mimo, Jeff Zachary, Woodhurst, Green Ninja, The Arachnids, Christopher Jordan, Nicholas Sykes, Caleb Choice, and Spider Noah. Thank you guys so much. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. If you want to be able to try to make this yourself, you can have access to my super secret STL file drive if you donate $5 a month or more on my Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video.